I started it over a year ago. Um, initially thought I'd just spend a weekend reading some reports from reputable organisations like the EU and the National Academy of Sciences in America. And that went to, that ended up going from a weekend to a month, to two months, to three months, to a year, uh, and really became uh, a rabbit hole in the context of um, finding more and more information that uh, I personally would have had no inkling or knowledge of prior to starting my examination into fluoride. So the more I dug, the, the, the more information I found. I started with a short report that might have been 60 pages dealing with just looking at the health issues and uh, that just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and, and then I realised that you can't just deal with the health issues without looking at the environmental issues and started looking into the environmental impacts of it and that went into the aquatic environment and then the terrestrial environment and um, when that was finished I realised like from a due diligence point of view and the whole risk management you can't you can't stop there you have to look at legislative uh, issues so I went in to review all of the EU and international regulations that are there with regard to you know um, water quality waste management f uh, food protection and everything else and that just ended up being another rabbit hole entirely so I had a maze literally of information that I ended up recording and um, it took me about uh, about two months, I suppose, really, to put that down into a report, but I was literally working on it full time. I basically parked all my commercial work and decided this needed to get done and finished the report, sent it off to a printers and got uh, about 70 bound copies of it printed, which this is the report, it's a substantial report, and you know, there's nearly 300 pages or over 300 pages, 350 pages in it. It cost a lot of money. I then sent it all by registered post to to uh, all of these individuals that are uh, listed in it. I listed them so that it's there on record that these people were actually given a, a copy of this report by registered post. And I sat back to wait to hear from them. And I didn't really hear anything. Uh, I got a few responses. In fact, I did get a very quick response from the Taoiseach saying that he had looked at it and passed it on to the Minister for Health. And then I got a response from the Department of Environment, from the senior policy guy there, saying that it had nothing to do with the Department of Environment and he had passed it on to the Department of Health. And other people were saying the same. So I kind of went, what was the point of me sending 70-odd copies of my report out to individuals if they all end up in a room in the HSE and nobody reads them? And that's really what it looks like. Well, I finished my report six months ago, and since then I've read a lot more. And because I've published the report and put it out online, I've had medical experts from all, the, all around the world contacting me. And I've, I've got people from 19 countries, probably 20 countries at this stage, who are reading the information that I've put out there. And there are people in all those countries who are sending me more and more information looking at health impacts. So what I knew six months ago to now is different. But what I did know six months ago was that clinical medical studies had shown 
that a percentage of the population are intolerant to fluoride, and it could be anything between 1% and 5% of the population, so anything between 46,000 and 200,000 people in Ireland may be intolerant to fluoride. And the way that this may express itself with them is uh, neurological problems, cardiovascular problems, uh, uh, dermatological problems, um, and uh, there were the three main areas that have been found in studies uh, in the United States and backed up recently by the only study that was ever done in Europe that I only found recently in Finland before, before and after they stopped fluoridating in 91. Um, remarkably, they found the same thing, that a percentage of the population are intolerant to fluoride and after three months after they stopped fluoridating in that city, there was a 13% improvement in general health among the population in three months. There are other conditions that are very prominent as well, which is like uh, osteoporosis, for instance, is, is documented scientifically, medically, to be linked to fluoride. Um, and that includes chronic musculoskeletal pain. And we have one of the highest levels of chronic musculoskeletal pain in the world. Arthritis would be an example of it. Neurological illness... According to the HSE, there are 770,000 people in Ireland who have, who, who have suffered from or ha are suffering from a neurological condition of one sort or another. That includes epilepsy, Parkinson's, all of these issues, and migraine and uh, depression and all of these issues. But the, the global average is 6.3%. So we're more than twice the global average for that. Um, Osteoporosis is twice the level of what it would be in the rest of, say, the British Isles, for example. Things like epilepsy were the highest in Europe. Sudden uh, death syndrome from a uh, sudden heart attack uh, were also the highest in Europe. It's a cardiovascular problem, and there's been studies linking fluoride to cardiovascular ill health as well, and how it affects the arteries in the heart and narrows them and uh, makes them uh, more inflexible and more prone to issues like a stroke occurring. Um, so there are just a few of them. I've had uh, three members, two two members of the National Academy of Sciences in America, which are like the top echelon of, of medical and scientific experts in the US contact me uh, and writing to me supporting my report. One of them actually wrote to the government as well, sent a letter to them supporting my report. Uh, I've had a professor in toxicology from uh, the United States. I've had a professor of dentistry in Canada. I've had um, uh, professors of public health in, in other countries like the UK and Australia contact me. Um, and uh, um, with no response in Ireland. Yeah, well, there was an interesting motion put down in Canada last week where uh, they're looking at a policy, legislative policy, where no industrial chemicals can be added to drinking water, which is a good one because hexafluorocytic acid is an industrial chemical.